as a guy who have more than one fast stop maybe either five or six so far i guess i have this familiarity with fast stop as a whole the vintage one uh, amphibian commander ski not fast stock europe and somehow i realized that uh, through those years, I learned a lot about having a fast talk and I want to share it with you guys and I hope you guys can learn a thing or two about this lovely brand called fast talk, the legendary one because they are a very good watch in my opinion and I hope uh, you can learn a thing or two and enjoy this video, thanks. Also, as a fanatic of fast talk and Chinese watch in general, maybe I have some temptation to join Uni Soviet or Communist Party. <laughs> Communist Party. Just kidding. <laughs> for all the praise and love that I have for Fostock, I realized that Fostock is not a very well branded even well-built watch it's an affordable watch and uh, sometimes people forgot about it and when they say what is your first uh, automatic watch that you recommended I mostly gonna say fast talk but I just realized maybe Seiko is a better option because there are a couple of things a couple of caveat or buyers beware that you need to know before you decided to try on fast talk and here are some of the lists. Without further ado, number one. Like I said before, Fostock is an affordable watch, so you have to set your expectation right because as an affordable watch, Fostock has uh, some known of quality control. Sometimes it's too sharp on the edges, sometimes the uh, pain is kind of odd sometimes the design is flawed and sometimes and sometimes because this is an affordable watch so you have to understand there's a reason why there is luxury watch and affordable watch and mid-tier watch and for stock is an affordable watch but a very good affordable watch number two what if I told you that Fostock movement and sometimes the design of the watch hasn't changed from the first iteration of the watch? That is how antique or maybe even sometimes people say obsolete the movement and design is. But I understand that train of thought that uh, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. And to be honestly speaking, Fostock design is rather unique. Because if you search on the web, you realize that the design of the back case in Amphibia is very awesome because the more depth you get into, the seal is became tighter and tighter due to the design. So I guess it's genius. Well, the word part is Commander Ski. If you translate, it would be a commander and Amphibia is, well, Amphibia, but as a watch goes, Commander Ski, if you ask me, is uh, not better than Amphibia. It's even weaker because Amphibia is a dive watch and Commander Ski is kind of dress watch. But, well, uh, all in all, go with Amphibia. It's an awesome watch, a legendary watch. Also, don't be afraid when you know that the crown is kind of wobbly because it was designed so in case when the watch fall, the crown stem didn't break. Kind of cool, huh? <laughs> Number three. Since it's an affordable watch, there is no hacking movement. So it's kind of hard to set some accuracy in your time setting and also the other annoying part is there is no such thing as easy date adjuster as you can see i need to uh, manually wind the watch in 24 hours well there is some like you said some hack how to set the date kind of fast if you turn it from 8 until 12 but then again it's kind of will break the watch so uh, be careful since there's no hacking movement there's also some difficulty to set the time right because as you can see when i try to lock the crown sometimes uh, the seconds or even the minutes kind of sets back 
Number four. This is an amphibia, and if I shake it, uh, there's no rotor sound of it. Yeah, for stock have this kind of symptoms that even if you buy the automatic one, the rotor used to break easily and turn the watch into a full manual wound. Uh, it's kind of annoying, but at least the watch still function properly. At least. Number five. I showed this image before. I'm gonna show it to you again until you realize that uh, the bezel in my Fostock is actually a bezel on my Seiko. Yes, it wears the same size of bezel at least, but the. Well, the Fostock is where more smaller and more tinier and Fostock is the first time that I realized that I prefer smaller watch than a big watch. So yeah, thanks to Fostock to makes me realize that the size isn't an issue, it's how you wear the watch is the issue. And back to the size issue, Fostock itself have so many variation either it's uh, official or not even custom because for stock is highly customizable so you got to prepare yourself for some different here and there in your for stock uh, i have a for stock with 18 millimeter strap but i also once have a for stock with 22 millimeter strap so uh, for stock is a tricky watch for a size comparison well i guess you just have to experience it yourself because it's weird but in a good way and it's kind of well features not flaw if you ask me number six so with all those features that i told you fostock is a weird watch an antique watch and a quiet taste it's either you love it or you hate it, but uh, if you ask me, I really, really, really love this watch. I guess this is a swatch for me, like a second watch. And as you can see, I wear my first stock almost to do all those stupid things. Yep, I went into accident driving bicycle, driving motorbikes. I fell while hiking and this watch can handle it all. Yes, the rotor is easily broken. It became true manual wound but still a great watch. Still working properly. Uh, but I wouldn't recommend it for your first automatic watch. But if you want to, go ahead because it's a great watch if you ask me and you will not be disappointed. But it's uh, too quirky, too weird. If you love things like that, maybe a niche market type of people or something, uh, go for it. It's a great watch, a tool watch, a better watch if you ask me. Well, maybe not in accuracy, but it's a great watch. Just try it. It's awesome.